Hi, sir. My name's Daniel Carter. I'm here at Uprising. This is Uprising TV, and we are here with Paradise Lost. Welcome, Hello. guys. Hello. Hi. Um, obviously, not too far for you guys to travel. Um, you know, so two, uh, two and a half hours exactly. I two and a half I hours. Down, so, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, look, this is uh, your first UK show with your new drummer, uh, Greedo. Um, How is he settled in uh, currently? Fine. Yeah, we we did um, well first UK show, but we just did quite an extensive uh, European show with him. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, we're doing a few different songs than we did on, on the tour, but uh, yeah, no, so far it's been fine, yeah. So is it kind of hard at this point to like adapt to having a new member in the band? Like, I mean, obviously you guys gel so, so much over time. It's probably more hard for them to adapt to how we are. Than, yeah. yeah cause, uh, we're Sorry. quite cliquey about it. So, uh, I guess so, but we're all, you know, our kind of sense of humour yeah. <laughs> bonds us together to a degree. And if they can get on board with that, then, yeah. you know, it's pretty easy, I guess. How, how did you guys kind of like uh, meet? Was it like, uh, do you friends beforehand and... Oh, well, I used to have a side band called Valentine yeah. a few years back, and we did a European tour in, I don't know, 2014 or something. Yeah. And he was in a band called Implore. Yeah. We were playing with us okay. every night, so we toured together. And just got on with him really well, Brilliant. kept in touch, and um, then I started a band called Strigoi, got in touch with him, asked him if he wanted to drum for that, yeah. and he did. And then Walter left uh, for Opeth, so... I said, do you want to try out for us? So, yeah. so yeah, you know. Fair enough, I'm good. Um, obviously, uh, album number 16, Obsidian, came out uh, in 2020. Uh, are there any plans in place for number 17? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we're always, you know, working on stuff, yeah, we'll, with, um, with other things, other irons in the fire. But yeah, I, we, we are kind of slowly getting it together and uh, getting some songs together. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, we'll, we're, we're always, you know, moving on and, Course, yeah. We've started writing, but it's probably going to be early next year when we record, and then with vinyl backlogs, God knows. Yeah. Hopefully next year it'll come out. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, actually, talking about kind of like past albums, Icon turns 30 this year. Uh, is there any plans to kind of commemorate that tour or special release? I don't know how much we can talk about. Yeah, uh, maybe. There's, ex <laughs> there's exclusives that people yeah. hold you to and things like that. And, yeah. yeah, there's some there's something happening. Something. Some stuff. Okay. Some Va various something. things happening, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um when you're on tour and you kinda of, you're putting set lists together, how do you guys kinda of think about what songs you're gonna include in and is it kind of like a personal preference or do you think of kind of the audience that you're gonna be playing um, to? It's not really a personal thing. I mean it's just about you think about I mean we have we played so many songs that people want want to hear and we probably played it at some point but it might not work that well because some songs work better than others yeah i mean there's always there's always songs people want to hear as well uh so you, you tend to put them I and mean, it's um we try and do about three or four songs from each album or represent each album yeah some some albums more than others perhaps in certain tours but uh it's around we try and do a good cross section of songs that we know are popular just from playing them for so many years you know yeah. so uh but yeah we also try and do a good section of the newest album we've done as well. Yeah. So we'll do four songs, you know, on, on an album tour, we'll do four songs from the latest album, mm. we'll try and do that as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we all print playlists and play around with the, the, yeah. the running order, et cetera, et cetera, so. But generally it's you, isn't it? Yeah. Because we're on a WhatsApp group and he just, he just sends through a picture of a set list. Well, yeah, then they say, well, and then we go, do that. Oh, I don't want to do that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. about it. It's, it's, it's weird, weird to know, obviously, you know, you guys and the, and the name that you've got and the, the legend that you've built up, and I can't imagine you talking over WhatsApp for some reason. That should blow my oh, mind. Oh, we do all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you, well, you imagine it's with old telephones. Why not? Ravens and so Yeah, the Ravens would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it starts off quite... It, it, yeah. <laughs> it starts off quite a serious group and then everyone starts well, yeah, stupid yeah. photographs and before you know it, it's been hijacked. Yeah. <laughs> you just mute yourself from the group. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Look at family chatting. Yeah. <laughs> Go, hey, auntie. Um, so, I mean, kind of like... Uh, with your with your sort of staying on your set list, kind of like, are there any songs where uh, you've have been gone for a long time that you've actually really want to incorporate back in, or are there songs that you're like, right, I'm never playing that song again? <laughs> these I mean, these songs that you think are going to work and they don't. I mean, for whatever reason, um, yeah. Sometimes you think it's going to really do work, and it, I don't know. It's, it's then other times you can kind of. I mean, nowadays when we Demo, so demo albums and demo songs, we kind of get a good idea of what's going to work live. Yeah. Uh, before we could do demo, before we had, you know, DAW systems and all that sort of yeah. stuff, we, we, it was kind of difficult to judge which song was going to even start the album or finish the album. I mean, you got a lot of, you know, you can really kind of tell now where songs yeah. are going to be in the, in the set. You can still get shocked though, can't you? Yeah. You can do a song live, you think it's going to be a 
yeah. a banger, and then just everyone's just quiet. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Mm, maybe so, just save this for headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any plans to kind of incorporate any bit, any, any of host into uh, the Paradise Lost set? Or are you we, uh, we did so much is lost, actually. Not this. Oh, it means actual. Oh, host, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. They, oh, the, the band host. Oh, the band. <laughs> uh, no, no band. <laughs> no, are, you, are, you, are you planning to do that live, or is that just uh, going to be an possibly, album thing? Possibly, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, we, um, we're kind of tired of we'll, sort of everything else in the moment. We'll, uh, yeah. it's, it's logistics. I mean, yeah. we've been asked this a few, a few times, and it's, it's getting the right offer yeah. to be able to then afford to go out and do it, because you have to put on a show for something like that. Yeah. So you have to build a stage set, take some stuff out, yeah. and um, but there's stuff coming in. So mm. I mean, it's gross. Is, is this kind of like is the host project kind of like to keep things fresh for you? Is it kind of like a, a like a, a another outlet change from Paradise Lost? It was originally yeah. for me. I, I just thought, oh, I'm fancy doing some electronic stuff again. Yeah. So I started toying around with it, and then the whole COVID thing happened, yeah. and um, just asked him if he wanted to get involved, and we just. It, it, became our thing to do yeah. through that and it's it's fun to do. Yeah. So I mean obviously talk, talking about the pandemic and things like that. Um how did how did you kind of like feel coming out of that and going back out on the road and um kind of hitting again? Was it kind of like you did you ever question, am I gonna go back and do this again or yeah, it, it was. Like, it wasn't really us, really. It was about everything, everybody else. How everyone else felt about being in groups yeah. of people. I mean, there was always that, that. Very early on, there was definitely that sort of thing. Everyone was a little bit. Should I be here? Should I have a mask on? And, and then, you know, if I went to a big group, a group of people myself, or, or I went to a gig, I was exactly the same. Yeah. It was more about that. What was the first one back? It was Bloodstock, wasn't it? Could it? Yeah. I think it was Bloodstock because yeah. we, they weren't flying yet. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. So you, you, you couldn't go abroad yet. It was, so. But there was a kind of general mild anxiety. With everyone, I think. Yeah, you know, and it felt bizarre. You, maybe you were at that one. It's, it's, it still just felt hard. Like you know, no, you walk in, you go, the first time backstage, and everyone's just it's people on each other's shoulders and stuff. Do we like, say hello? Or <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't know what to do. It's what, so, what's I mean, bizarre. As far as playing and doing what we do, that was absolutely no different at all. It was just a general mild sort of banter. There, one I think. Yeah. Um, are there any current songs in your playlist or any albums that are kind of stand out for for you? Kind of like that are giving you inspiration currently. What in our current? No, uh, no, well, just... no interesting in general. What, oh, what, what, what's inspiring you guys? You know, so far into your oh, career. Um, yeah, are you sort of looking back, or are you kind of looking forward to what what other people are doing, like the newer bands? I'm always interested to see what the people are doing. Yeah, it's there's very few things sort of catch my eye for any length of time. Really, I'm kind of become like the children. I just <laughs> sort of consume music while it's there, then it's gone again. You know? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a sad way of speaking. But uh, I can't pronounce most of the bands that I like. <laughs> You know, it's, it's like one the spiky of the logo. The yeah, well, no, I had one yesterday, Season of Mist, and I said, oh, Season of Mist, oh, can you send me it? And they said, I, it was on a call. Yeah. So I was trying to say it and I couldn't, so I had to type it to him. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had the phone down. Erdva, uh, uh, or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it was, but it's pretty good. <laughs> there's, there's, there's obviously bands where when I'm interviewing them and I start, like, right, I'm going to have to look up the pronunciation for this. And like, you go on to Google and it's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I've got I do I Shazam everything because yeah. if, if I'm in a restaurant, I go, oh, that's great, I'll Shazam it. Yeah. And I'll check that out later. Yeah. And I never get around to it. So I've, I've got about 500 songs in a backlog where I need to check out. <laughs> um, obviously, with with your genre, I mean, like goth, doom, death metal, all comes into it. I mean, like, you've got such a wide and diverse uh, musical background. Kind of like, uh, how do you work in kind of morphing? A Paradise Lost album, you know. Do you? Well, obviously, you you kind of went from um, the uh, the early two thousand lot like, within Requiem that sort of thing, where you kind of went to back to like the goth roots, and then now you've come back more death metal. Like obviously, especially with your your vocal style, Nick. Um, kind of like, how do you address a Paradise Lost album? I think we've got quite a quite a, a broad table to mess around on, really. You know, I mean, it's uh, we haven't really pinned ourselves down. You know, we, and we have tried lots of different things over the years. So we, yeah, when we when we write albums, it's not a case of oh, this has got to be heavy or this has got to be this or that. You no, know, we we, have, we can sort of play around within our own. Well, we try we try and approach it every time like we haven't got a huge history. Like, yeah. What do we fancy doing now? Yeah. You know, that off the cuff. Yeah. And most for the most the most part it works yeah. out okay. You know, um, and we try not to ignore different periods of the band or different influences we try, we try and include as much as we can yeah um yeah and it's 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 trial and error yeah definitely are you gonna go and check out any of the bands or 
I don't know. Pro I'll probably put my head around the door. Yeah, you're going to sneak in. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably put my head around the door. Um, yeah, I usually like to see, you know, yeah. the, what the noise is and all. Well, again, one I can't pronounce, sour. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, whatever. Seer. I, I, that was one I had to look on Google. Is it seer? Seer. It's Scot Scottish. It's, it's Gaelic. Oh, is it? Yeah, So uh, and it's pronounced seer. Yeah, OK. So, yeah. But that, that, that was one I was there going, right, I've got to get this right. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe go see this. Yeah. <laughs> maybe a bit of Comedy Christ, I don't know. Yeah. And see what else is about, I don't know. What yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate no it. No problem. And uh, good luck for your set tonight. Yep, and thank you. I look forward Cheers. to watching you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Thank you.